God is in his holy place. God he unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears, day and night without rest, over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest forage in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Among the nation's idols, is there any that gives rain? Or can the mere heavens send showers? Is it not you alone, O Lord, our God, to whom we look? You alone have done all these things. The word of the Lord. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against the, us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us for we are brought very low. <clears throat> Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory 
Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. <clears throat> the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send His angels, and they will collect out of His kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. One of the priests at the Abbey, at St. Michael's Abbey, is the priest who is, you might say, principally in charge of the new Abbey construction project. He's the priest that works most closely with the construction company. His name is Father Gregory. And however, he, does not, he did not always have such a prestigious assignment or, jo or job. When I first entered St. Michael's Abbey as a seminarian, Father Gregory was not in charge of the Abbey construction project, but he was in charge of the seminarian work crew, and he had to work his way up. I did not always have the prestigious assignment or job of working here at St. John's. I was on that seminarian work crew. Typically, the seminarian work crew would meet after our prayers and lunch in the afternoon, about three or four times a week. And it was made up mainly of the novices and postulants, those seminarians who were the, the newest members of the Abbey, of the community. And it was there at that meeting that Father Gregory would give us our assignments on which we were assigned to work throughout the afternoon until it was, once again, time for prayers. And there were a wide range of jobs. You could do anything from cleaning the church to cleaning bathrooms to cutting down trees to weeding a field. And so one afternoon, Father Gregory assigned the then Frauder Brendan and another Frauder, another seminarian, Frauder Maximilian, to pick weeds in a field. And this particular field, he, we had hoped to turn into a lawn. And Father Gregory had explained it as, well, there's some weeds you know, in this field, but there's also some grass. So what I'd like you to do is try to preserve as much of the grass as you can and just pick the weeds so that eventually we can seed it and then grow a nice lawn. And so Father Frauder Maximilian and Frauder Brendan went down to the field. And there we discovered that it was mainly a field of weeds. The spots of, or the places of grass may have been, you know, a quarter uh, in size in between those weeds. And we realized after not very long that this was an impossible task to complete 
in what Father Gregory thought we could do in about two and a half hours. It may have taken, you know, I later had told him, Father, it will take the whole month, if at least not, at least that, if we had every afternoon to work on it. And so as we worked on it, we quickly realized how difficult it was and how impossible it was. I was a little bit, I had, I was a year, I had entered a year before Frater Maximilian or Father Maximilian now, and I could see Father Maximilian getting frustrated as we were working on the field. This was not the first time that I had been given an impossible task to accomplish during those work afternoons. So I was not quite as disturbed. And sometimes when you're working with someone who you could see is more frustrated than you are, you know, it's a little bit easier for you. So I tried in my best to try to console Frater Maximilian. And eventually the, the afternoon ended. We did very little, but as much as we could. We were later, the next afternoon, we told Father Gregory how difficult the assignment was, how impossible it was. And, you know, Father Gregory probably had not even looked at the lawn or the, the, the field before he gave us that excitement. And he said, oh, no problem, no problem. And so that afternoon, he got a tractor, and he went down, and he plowed the field. <laughs> Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Father Gregory was kind of like God, who gives us our vocations, assignments, jobs, or tasks in life. The field of weeds is our vocation. It is an impossible task for us to accomplish, relying upon our own strength and our own natural gifts. Frater Brendan and Frater Maximilian were Father Gregory's guinea pigs, gullible and ignorant of the ways of the Abbey and of the ways of God. The tractor was and is God's power, grace, and mercy. God comes in like Father Gregory on his tractor after we've been trying to weed the field for a long time until we finally re realize that without the tractor or without the grace and mercy of God, we are completely incapable of creating a beautiful lawn or we are completely incapable of fulfilling God's commands and of ultimately arriving in, with him and living with him in heaven for all eternity. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Uniting our voices together as one, let us lift our prayers to God for the church and her members, especially Jonathan Nabot, for whom this Mass is being offered, as we carry forth our mission to build a God's kingdom. May Christ the sower guide our holy work. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our elected officials, may God bring them to new awareness of their responsibilities. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from hunger and thirst, may God's mercy and compassion show forth through the generosity of others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who tend to the land so as to yield abundant fruit, may God's presence be with them as they provide for all of us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have passed away from this life, may God draw them to himself for eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we bring our prayers before you, and we ask that you hear and answer them in your great mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. And with your spirit. Peace with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.